Hey, everyone, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and Pastor Matt Richard is back again. Pastor, how are you doing today? I'm okay. As I mentioned, I'm just getting over a cold, so that uh, comes around every year. You know, you get nailed at the beginning of the year, you know, kind of mm-hmm. the school year, and then yeah. usually you're fine, and then right around January, February, you get nailed again. So anyway, I told you, I, I, my wife told me, she said to me last night, she said, if you're not done coughing here by tomorrow, you're going to the doctor. So I got, I got today to get better. <laughs> and if I know I got another doctor tomorrow. <laughs> so. I, I, yeah, I for one love it when my voice uh, sounds extra raspy when it's my job to talk for a living. Nothing, nothing uncomfortable <laughs> there. Um, but we're going to make do. Uh, <laughs> Pastor, sounds, we've been. Sounds a little ahead. more manly though, right? When their voice is down, a little more gruff, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, like yeah, I actually, yeah. I'm a fan of it, but it's just sort of like when you have to stop <laughs> to blow your nose 15 times while you're doing it, it takes away from all the extra manliness. Yeah. Um, and so that that sort of ruins it for me. Um, I, I started carrying around a hanky, like like one of those old farmer handkerchiefs, right. um, not like a lace frilly one, but like, you know, the, the um, navy blue paisley one, you know, so... Yeah. That, that that you'll make up a little bit for it, but then you got to wash it. Gross. We're yeah. we're moving right on away from that one. Uh, we've been asking, what does Jesus say about stuff? And I got one that he didn't actually address in the Bible because I'm a bad person. Uh, so we we've got Reformation Day coming right up here for us as Lutherans. This is a place where we broke the church, um, and I think that that that's worth sort of addressing. Um, but what would Jesus say if he could talk right now? And and talk more i guess that's a bad way of saying it he talks to us through scriptures but what would jesus say about the reformation from the holy scriptures yeah uh i would i would say there'd be an applause there'd be a cheer uh the 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 whole reformation was founded upon basically let's just boil it down to two simple things uh the first we would call um maybe we describe this way descent uh theology uh so we can compare that between ascending theology so that's climbing up a ladder versus descendant theology god comes to us and so uh real simply stated and maybe overly simply stated that uh when it came to the reformation during that time the 1500s many people were what climbing that ladder through indulgences through uh, monastic vows and through pilgrimages and through all of their good works they were climbing so every little work they did was another you know another little step up the ladder they were doing and so when the reformation came along uh basically that ladder was uh knocked down with a pack saw and thrown on the wood chipper, if you will. And yet a lot of people who are on the top who were pretty proud of themselves up the top. They had done, spent their whole life climbing to the very top. And then all of a sudden they came tumbling down. And then they said, well, who's cutting down this ladder? Who's destroying the ladder? And they said, uh-uh, is this old, this, not this old, but this, this, this young monk, you know, from Wittenberg, what is he doing? What is this monk doing? Why is he, why is he chopping at this ladder? And uh, so uh, when we look at this, what would Jesus say? Uh, well done. Well done, faithful servant. It's me and me alone. Right. So you you paint imagery that kind of reminds me of the Tower of Babel, actually. It's everybody trying to sort of build their way up to heaven. And like you you look at the, the story and you're like, well, what does that mean? Like, are, are they like, are they trying to build a tower that actually gets to where God is? Are they trying to escape uh, wrath from the flood that, that he promised would never come again, but they still remember it? What are they trying to accomplish? Because it's not going to work. And so even the people at the top of the tower, when God sort of confuses their languages and disperses them amongst the, the, the earth, I'm sure they didn't like it at the time, uh, but, but God actually did this for their good because he wants to point them to something that will actually work, not you climbing up to God, but God, like you said, descending down to save us. It's, it's also in our creed too, like the, the, the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, they're not sort of about us making our way up to God, but it's, it's he was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. God comes down to earth to, to oh, suffer yeah. and save us. Yeah, you know, there's a there's an old professor that uh, story, and then I, I I don't know if exactly how it went, but it's nonetheless worth worth hearing again. There's a professor who's talking about the incarnation, right? When when the Son of God puts on human flesh and comes right to us, and he comes to us and laid in a manger. I mean, it puts on flesh and blood, uh, lives amongst us and bleeds and dies, um, and and rises. And his whole point was, this Jesus of yours, he came so low that he came so low that no sins would escape his grasp. And he comes out with a piece of chalk. And I'm told that he got on his hands and knees and started writing the name Jesus on the floor of the seminary room, uh, saying he came this low under your feet. And that's good gospel, right? I mean, that Jesus comes to me and 
boy, all the time that we spend trying to climb our ladders in life, you know, and taking our good works and, and we kind of catalog our good works and then we kind of get puffed up with pride and, and we start going up that ladder and, and then we start competing with each other. We see somebody else climbing the ladder, we get jealous and we try to yank them by the ankle and pull them down the ladder or we step on their face or they step on our knuckles and we're all clamoring up this ladder and man, the ladder just needs to be blown up. And that's what the Reformation did. It was like a big detonation, a big bomb that blew up that ladder or taking that ladder and throwing it in the wood chipper. And those that were on the bottom, what happened? They were they were just, man, God be praised. The Lord, Son of God, he comes to us to give us good gifts. Where those that were high on the ladder, they became very, very, you know, probably uh, in, in, in angry. We'll just say it that way. Very, very angry. Yeah. And they went after what? Who blew up the ladder? And they found this guy named Martin Luther and let's kill him. Let's let's put an end to him. He blew up the ladder. He needs to go. We need to keep the ladder. Right. So uh, for, for this, then, um, nobody likes that the church is broken. Even Luther didn't like that the church is broken now, like that, that, that there is schism in the church um, is is not a good thing, but it's also one of those signs of the visible church. So we, we talk about the marks of the church, that, that you know you're in the right church where the word of God is taught in its truth and purity and where the sacraments are administered according to God's institution. But you also know that you're in the true church when the devil's real upset about it, um, when, when it's being beset by the wolves. If there are no wolves, if there is no devil, if there is no sort of division inside of the church, you either don't have sinners there, and that means you don't have people there, or you are not standing on anything that is objectively true like God's word. We're, we're not happy that that the ladder had to get broken, but at the same time, we're happy that it's not our job to climb up to heaven. Um, if the church exists only to tell people to get better, that's not going to save anyone, and that needs to burn. We, we need to be able to say that. Yeah, I mean, and this all comes back to Luther uh, points to this, and our confessions actually hint at this too, when we talk about in chapter four of Genesis, Cain and Abel. And mm -hmm. uh, just love the picture of Cain and Abel. And you look at two, two brothers um, giving sacrifices before God, and uh, Abel gives his in faith. We hear that from the book of Hebrews, talks about how he gives it in faith. Whereas Cain, it's a self-righteousness, um, where it's, it's a little bit of ladder climbing, we could say, that he brings something before God, and he demands a payout, you know, God to cough out a blessing to him. And uh, when God rejects his offering, what does he do? He becomes full of anger again. And, and, and he persecutes Abel. Luther says, he talks about this, that the, the church of Cain will always persecute the church of Abel. And that's what happened in Genesis 4. That's what happened with the Pharisees and Jesus. That's what happened to Paul with the Judaizers in the book of Galatians. Um, that's what we see when, um, you know, uh, the fight between uh, this guy named Pelagius and, and Augustine. We see the same fight with uh, Luther and the uh, Roman Catholic Church in the 1500s. And the same fight exists today. And so the heart of the Reformation, I've, said, I've heard it said this bit way before, the heart of the Reformation, uh, we don't necessarily just go back and look at the Reformation, study it for historical sake. But that Reformation explosion, the explosion of the gospel, the explosion, the blowing up of the ladder needs to happen every single generation and every single church. Because if it doesn't, then we lose Jesus. And so we tend to always drift to making our own ladders, playing king of the hill, getting to the top, and we forget Christ. And um, meanwhile, Christ, he what? Apart from ladders, he comes all the way down to the bottom and he says, your sins are forgiven. And it's that simple. That simple. Absolutely. We'll, we'll always try and build this church by works. Like the, the problems that we're describing, we might not use the same vocabulary or, or like, you know, the, the same forms of indulgences or anything like that, but we're still trying to impress God by our works. And what's wonderful is that you, you mentioned sort of the church of Cain and Abel. God has also never ceased to sort of call back to the sinners who would justify themselves by their works and, and offer them forgiveness of sins. God in his mercy doesn't just say sort of to those of you who know you can't save yourselves, come here for salvation. But he also says to those of you who think you can bring your very best works and lay them at this altar. And I will give you forgiveness of sins for them because they're not good enough. I, I will give you the, the stuff that actually does save. So he, he doesn't sort of cast aside, but, but rather he, he, he calls back by law and, and by gospel towards repentance, everyone who would try and save themselves by climbing up that ladder. Yeah, you know, the way, the way I've described this uh, described this before is that uh, when, when we are in the process of climbing the ladder, all of our intention, all of our will, all of our determination is what? Getting up that next step. And we're, 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 we're gripping a hold of that ladder with white knuckles, and we're working and working and working, ascending, 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 and then our neighbor becomes a threat to us, and our neighbor becomes a uh, uh, competition, if you will, make it who, who can make it higher. But when we understand that Jesus comes to us through the word and sacrament, and that those are sheer gifts given to us. Then I don't have to spend all my time and energy worrying about Matt Richard climbing. I can look to my neighbor and good works. And that 
Uh, essentially, as we've heard before many times, God doesn't need our good works, but our neighbor does. And so we can say, God be praised that I'm forgiven in Jesus, that he has sustained me, that he comes to me constantly to give me his good gifts. And so that as, as my good friend, I have a good friend, his name, name's Mike. He always says, you know, I said, well, Mike, what are you doing? He goes, ah, I'm just going to spill Jesus on people today. And how do you spill Jesus on people unless you have what a full cup? And mm -hmm. so when you're given good gifts, uh, we love because he what first loved us. And so I would argue that uh, good works flow from faith. And that faith is when we're given Jesus as a free gift passively. And then once we passively receive Jesus, well, that faith is mighty. It's active. Um, it does good works for the neighbor. And uh, why? Because we don't have to spend all this time and energy climbing. When Jesus comes to us, we can focus on our neighbor. It's pretty awesome. neat. Yeah, that's great. Pastor, that's, I think, exactly what Jesus would say about the Reformation. Thanks so much for joining us today. Good to see you, Harrison. Hey, have a good one.